Verizon is doing some other amazing things. Slightly off topic, but I always take the opportunity to mention what we're doing with fiber optics and bringing fiber optics to, so far, over 9.3 million premises in our footprint. And uh, if you happen to live in an area where you can get our Fios internet service or our Fios TV service, I, I'm going to bet that you're as thrilled to be a customer as I am because it's an incredible product. So Verizon, I think, has done some really amazing, innovative things. And um, we are changing with the marketplace. So we have a vision for a mobile future, very appropriate for this conference to discuss. And we have a business plan for making it happen. And a lot of it depends on people like you in this audience. So with, with landlines, it was all about connecting one location to another, right? And the untethered society of today is more about, is, not, is really not about location so much, it's about being able to connect with wherever the customer is and with whatever mobile device they choose to use. And it's also about a broad array of connections. So it's about electronics, digital media players, gaming consoles and appliances. It's about managing energy in the home. On the auto side, it's about fleet tracking and there's tracking of goods. So we see a future of really an incredibly, incredibly broad array of connections. It's about places to places, people to people, people to places, and even devices to devices. We are also seeing an incredible degree of wireless growth. Text messaging has been mentioned more than a few times today. It took seven years to hit 10 billion text messages transferred from one subscriber to another on our network. Uh, it took seven years to hit 10 billion messages in a single month. But it only took seven more months <coughs> after that to hit 20 billion messages in a single month. So we're seeing a hockey stick effect here, and the data usage is really going through the roof. Our data revenues currently comprise more than 20% of our revenue, up dramatically from just a couple of years ago. So our vision is, is really broad now for the future of connections and data, and it's really hard to fully grasp what that future is. So, we have devised a new business plan that some of you have probably heard about. There's three parts to it. First of all is our open development initiative. Um, open development is about bringing any applications and any devices to Verizon's network. So, what was uh, the, the headline that David Pogue put up this morning when hell freezes over and things fly and Verizon opens its network? Well, I'm here to announce that that must have happened because Verizon's <laughs> network is open or it is opening. I attended our Open Developers Conference back in March, and uh, it was really an exciting conference. There were over 400 application developers and device manufacturers represented there. Um, we announced a set of specifications that if a device manufacturer follows those and goes through an expedited testing process of just up to four weeks or less, they can put devices on Verizon's network. It's really that simple, and there are going to be pricing plans, and there are going to be options for, for uh, device manufacturers to manage the relationship, the complete relationship with the customer, or there will be options for Verizon to do the billing. There's just a, a variety of ways that we are going to work with applications developers and device manufacturers to make this a reality, to make open networks a reality yeah. on Verizon. So the second prong is our fourth generation technology, and that's long-term evolution. We've selected long-term evolution because it appears to be the developing global standard, and it has a number of advantages. There's significant throughput increase, putting much higher speeds, giving us much higher speed capability. We foresee the possibility of having 75 megabits on the downlink compared to only two to five today. It strengthens our ability to leverage our relationship with our minority owner Vodafone. We have trials in place with them and will enable us to put seamless networks in place. 
So the customer experience will be far enhanced on a global scale. LTE gives us a chance to market devices that will truly connect the globe. So it's a very exciting development. The next steps are finalizing the standards and beginning field trials with Bonafo and China Mobile and the rest of 2008. In 2009, we will begin selecting our vendors and doing some advanced device trials. Then in 2010, we expect to launch the network commercially and have a rapid acceleration of right, to get a full deployment. So the final problem of our business plan is um, something that you've certainly heard about is, is our acquisition of Spectrum in the 700 megahertz auction. We see a number of unique benefits here, including the best propagation, the best overall coverage results, the best penetration of buildings, and the best throughput. We acquired a single frequency, 22 megahertz nationwide in the C block. Of course, the FCC's open access requirements do apply to this, and we will comply with those, but we believe what we have in mind for open development is actually much greater than what the FCC had envisioned, and will certainly meet those requirements. So with that, um, I just had one question I'd like to ask. How many people in this audience happened to attend our developers conference March 19th? Are there anyone here who did? Okay, well I have a good report to take back that I've spread the word to a group of people who uh, really needed to know. Uh, and uh, I'll recommend that we have one in Silicon Valley. Thank you very much.